Okay, moving on from our last basic if statement video, uh, I want to look at comparison operators and the if else statement. So in our previous example, we had an if statement here, comparing the value of the age variable with the number 45. And if it were true, if this variable was equal to the value of 45, it would do this. Whatever code I put in here, I can put multiple lines of code, but whatever code it is will run. Otherwise, in all other cases, if age is any value other than 45, this will happen. Now there's going to be times when you want to do two or three things. So maybe it's if the age is under 40, if the age is 40 to 50, or if the age is over 50. Three different things are going to happen in our code. So let's look at how we do that. Instead of just putting equal signs, I mean, I could say if it's equal to 1, if it's equal to 2, if it's equal to 3, and have a whole long series of if statements, but that's really inefficient. So instead, we're going to say if age is less than 40. So anything up to 39.999999. If I wanted to include the value 40, I can do that. Less than or equal to 40. So this will run if the value of age is less than or equal to 40. Now, I want to do something for the in-between. So if it's greater than 40, but less than 50, This is how we do that. So it's kind of like combining the else with another if statement. So this curly brace right here, this is the one that ends the initial if statement. And then there's another set here for this if statement. The else at the bottom is going to become the catch-all. It's kind of like the otherwise for any other value. So if age is less than 40, I'm going to do this. Else if age is going to be between 40 and 50. So there's a special way that we have to write that. So if age is greater than 40, we're going to run this bit here. Now I also want to say if age is less than 50, and then any other number, so basically 50 and greater, that's going to run here. Now to combine these two things, we need a special operator in the middle. We have to say if age is greater than 40 and age is less than 50. Both those things have to be true, not just one of them. So in the middle here, we do this. A double ampersand means and. If you wanted to do an OR, it's the two pipe characters. Usually you'll find them right above the backslash on your keyboard. So shift backslash will get those for you. So two ampersands means AND, two pipe characters means OR, sorry. And then that's going to try both these things. So the computer's going to come in here and say if look inside the parentheses and say, oh, okay, there's an AND here, so both these things have to be true. It will then evaluate this one and see, okay, is age greater than 40? If it is, we're good to continue. Then it will look at the second one and say, is age also less than 50? Both of these things have to be true. And that's what the AND means. Both parts have to be true. Now, it's not required here in this instance, but Good practice to wrap whatever it is you're comparing inside another set of parentheses. It just helps with the readability of what you're typing. There, like that. I'm just putting some extra space in here. You don't need these extra spaces. I'm putting it in for readability's sake. And then down at the bottom here, else, any value greater than 50. Now, what if we wanted to make sure that the age was not a negative number? So we can say 
another one here. Else if age is greater than or less than 0 or less than 1. Maybe that's our cutoff age. Maybe 20 is our cutoff age. Whatever value we want to do. If we're checking for negative numbers, so if age is less than 0, it's a negative number. So we're not going to do something in our code if that's the case. And then our else is going to be down at the bottom. So we have if, else if, else if, else. We can do as many of these else ifs as we want. We're using comparison operators. And our comparison operators, we've got less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, equal to, not equal to, that's what this exclamation mark means. And we can even use the uh, exclam exclamation mark all by itself. If you remember in the last uh, video, I was doing something with if first or if last. You can flip the value. So I'm looking for the first to be false. So I get the double negative, so this will evaluate to true. It can be a little bit mind-bending at first. We don't typically use it like this very often, but once we get into doing some web development and checking for the existence of various objects within our web page, you will sometimes use this to say, okay, if that thing doesn't exist on my web page yet, I want to do something. So these are our basic comparison operators. There is also a three equals sign, which is comparing to see if two objects are actually the same object. They're not just the same value as each other. We'll get into using that one a little bit later. So there's our if, else, if, else, if, else, and our and and or operators, and our comparison operators, where we can compare the value of multiple values or multiple strings or multiple numbers, whatever it is that you happen to be working with.